Do you prepare the edges of your fabric before you start cross stitching? Or do you just dive right in and end up with something that looks a little bit like this? Well, if that doesn't bother you, then absolutely brilliant. But if it does, then there are some ways to stop it. Hi there, stitchy friends. I'm Kat from Catkin and Lily, bringing you the best tips, tricks and tutorials so you can get the most joy from your stitching. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about when and why you might want to prepare the edges of your cross stitch fabric. And I'll share five methods for how you can do that. Let's tackle the all important question first, and that's, do you really need to do anything to prepare the edges of your fabric? And the short answer is no, probably not. And I don't for fairly small projects because if you're not going to be stitching it for very long, it's unlikely that the edges will have very much time to fray. So it's probably not worth worrying about. But for medium to larger size projects, then I do like to prepare the edges just so they don't get really tatty. And especially if I'm stitching on even weave or linen because those fray like crazy, so they can get really irritating. So the first reason for preparing your edges is that if you have frayed edges, then your thread can catch on those as you stitch. And that's annoying from having to unhook them, but it can also rough up your thread, which could increase the risk of knotting and tangling. And the second reason is that if you use a lot of fabric around the edge due to fraying, then you might have le left to finish your project with at the end, which again, it's just a bit frustrating. And finally, you might just like to keep your edges nice and neat because you like the way that that looks. So let's take a look at some methods that you can use to stop your fabric edges fraying. And I've tried to cover various methods that I've seen cross stitchers say that they use, and they all have pros and cons, but there's no right or wrong method, so you can hopefully find one that you like the look of. So method number one is to deliberately fray the edges. So absolutely no equipment or products needed for this method, apart from a needle. It's super quick and easy, and just involves pulling out a few rows, maybe even just one row, from the edge of your fabric. So you're deliberately fraying the edge of your fabric and then it's unlikely to fray any further as you stitch. But I would think the chances of your thread catching on this edge now as you stitch are actually much higher than if you didn't do anything to it at all. So I can't really see this being a method it would use. It's just one I've seen recommended, so I thought I'd start with that. Method number two is to use pinking shears. And this works really well as long as you have Something like this, these are really heavy duty pinking shears suitable for cutting fabric. So, as you can see, they do glide through the fabric fairly easily, but they are a little bit heavy and unwieldy to use. And if you're like me and like to get all the little bits lined up, that could be a nuisance. But yeah, you've got a nice edge there and you get a few little bits coming off, but generally it's pretty good. And unless you have a partner that really hates all the little bits falling off as you stitch, that's generally pretty good and very quick and easy. Now, if you are using this method, don't forget you will lose a little bit of the fabric off the edge, but as you can see, you can trim off just a really tiny section. So you shouldn't really be losing too much fabric there. Now, I would also say if you have hand problems, then this could be a problem for you because these are quite chunky and as I say, quite unwieldy to use. I'm also not quite sure how well this would work. I haven't used this method on any really long running projects, so I don't know how well that would last, but it's certainly very quick and easy. These pinking shears that I bought cost me about eight pounds. Method number three is to tape the edges. And this one's a real favorite with a lot of cross stitches. It isn't one I use a huge amount, and I'll explain why in a minute, but it's really simple because you can just use some tape along the edge of your fabric. I've seen various tapes recommended for this, including masking tape, washi tape, which is what I've got here, micropore or surgical tape. I would probably suggest avoiding cellar tape. And it's really simple. You just take your piece of tape, put it along your fabric, so I've got half of the tape on the fabric and half over the top. Simply rip that, turn this over, 
and fold the tape down on the other side. So that's nice and neat now and that won't fray. Now the reason I haven't been a huge fan of this is that I often find it starts coming unstuck in the middle of the project, especially if it's quite a long running project. Now this might just be that I didn't have the best tape, maybe washi tape isn't completely ideal for this, although it does look rather pretty. And it can also leave a sticky residue at the end if you take it off afterwards. But you could remove that by washing it, or you could simply cut it off, although again remember that that's going to reduce the size of your fabric a little bit as well. Method number four is to sew the edges, and there's a few ways that you can do this. If you have a sewing machine, you can use that to stitch a zigzag line along each edge, or if you have a fancy machine that can do overlocking, then that's a great feature to use. But you can also hand stitch along each edge using a whip stitch, blanket stitch, or even just a line of tacking stitches. And this is a method that I use. You can see I've done it on this piece here. I've just done a little whip stitch along the edge and I'll show you how I did that. I took my fabric, I've just secured the thread at this end and then I've got a needle and thread, I'm just using my regular tapestry needle and I'll just take the needle through. So each time I'm just pushing the needle through from the front to the back and it's nice with Ada you can actually count the number of squares so I usually go along the same number of squares and just pull that through each time and that will make your whip stitch along there which will give you a really nice neat edge so I do like this method quite a lot yes it's a little bit more time consuming but it does give a really nice finish to it and it's very durable for long running projects and it won't leave any residue on the edges and you won't lose any fabric size. So yes, this one's definitely a, a method that I quite like to use. Method number five is to use a seam sealant. And there are a lot of products out there marketed as seam sealants. You can see I have a few of them here. And the ingredients vary, but essentially they're all liquids that you can apply to the edge of your fabric to stop it fraying. They're pretty easy to use because they usually come in a bottle or a tube with a fine nozzle. So they're really easy to apply to the edge of your fabric. And you do need to allow a little bit of time for that to dry, but all the ones I tested here were dry within at the most 20 minutes. And quite a few of these are dry quicker than that. When you finish your stitching, you can leave that sealed edge in place. It's totally non-toxic, but I have to say I'm a little bit paranoid, so I do usually cut the edges off anyway, just to avoid anything remotely chemically being near my fabric or my stitching. And of course, as you'd expect, I have tested these products out so I can report back on which ones I like the best. Spoiler alert, they are all good. Now you have two types of product. So these two on the left here, these are the fabric glues. And then I have the ones on the right here. These are the liquid plastic type. So let's take a look at these in a bit more detail. These are the two liquid plastic type products that I tested. So I've got Prim Fray Check and Dritz Fray Check, which is basically the same product because the Dritz brand is now owned by Prim, so you might find it under either name, but basically the same product. And I have the Taylor Fray Block. So the Prim or Dritz one is a nylon in an alcohol base, so it is flammable, but only in liquid form. Once it's dry, it's completely non-flammable, non-toxic, and it's very easy to apply. It dries really quickly in about five minutes, dries completely clear. And this version even has a little applicator on the end, although honestly, that made it more expensive, which is not worth paying for. And the Taylor Fray block, again, this is flammable, but only until it's dried. And once it's dried, it even says that it's washable and dry cleanable. I've not tested that. It's easy to apply. I found it a little bit harder to control the amount coming out in this tube compared to the bottles of the Fray Check. And this one took a little bit longer to dry, dried within about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, some people have said that this one leaves the fabric edges much softer than the Fray Check, and I would agree with this. When you're using some of these sealants, it can make the edges of the fabric a little bit dry and scratchy, but the Fray Block was actually quite nice. So here are the two fabric glues that I tried. 
I've got Aline's Stop Fraying Permanent Fabric Adhesive and High Tack Fray Stop Glue. And these are both non-toxic and washable. The Aline's dried within about 15 minutes and left the fabric edge quite nice and soft. On the product, I will say it says it takes 24 hours to dry, but I, it definitely doesn't. If you're just using it to seal the edge of a fabric, then it is only about 15 minutes. The high tack took about 20 minutes to dry, so that was a little bit longer. And it was the hardest to apply because it was actually quite gloopy coming out of the tube. And I sort of had to rub it along the edge to try and get a nice even coverage. But it was still nice and soft on the fabric edges. So that's your seam sealants. And I have to say, they are generally a pretty quick and easy method to use, and they do make a really good job of sealing the edge of your fabric. I will say, I think they're quite an expensive option. Um, I bought these quite a few years ago, and they're still going, so they, a little bit does go a long way, but they can be a bit expensive to buy in the first place. So that brings us to the end of the roundup of methods that you can use. And in summary, I tend to mostly use either a seam sealant if I want a really quick option for a small project, but I do like to whip stitch the edges for slightly larger projects because I think it looks really nice. It does a really good job and it won't affect the size or integrity of my fabric in any way. But I think I might give the tape option another go just because it is so quick and easy to do and it does look really pretty. Okay, so that brings us to the end of my roundup of ways to stop your fabric edges fraying. And I hope you found one or more of them that you like the look of. If you've also decided that you really can't be bothered to do any of them, then that's absolutely fine too. Let me know in the comments if you prepare your edges or not, and do you have a favourite method? Did I miss one? If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, then please make sure to do that so you don't miss out on any more stitchy tips. Thank you so much for watching, and happy stitching!